Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to all of you and welcome to those of you joining us on Zoom. This is going to be the last 10 o'clock service on Zoom. Just so that those who know, if you want to join us on Zoom in the future, it will be at 8.45. So let's say hello to some people, shall we? If you're in the singing group, can you give us a wave? Good morning. Um, can you say hello to Roxy at the back? She's going to speak for us. And we pray together in a moment. So all the words are on the screen. We say together, hello, I'm not too proud, I'm not ashamed, no need to hide my face. I'm just standing here, just as I am, in my own little space. Hello God, I like being here with you, with all these other people. Right then, so what do all those letters spell? If any? Harvest. Right, so I need you to use those letters and tell me a drink with jam and bread. Tea. Something that you see in the night sky. Something that you wear under your shirt when it's cold. You're not even looking at those. <laughs> <laughs> Spots that you get when you're allergic to something. Rash. The blood vessel that pumps blood around your heart. Oh. Have I done the wrong thing? <laughs> so the answer is heart. Um, so when there's been no rain and your crops have all died and there's no water for your animals to drink and you and your village are really, really hungry and you just don't know when you'll next have something to eat. Starve, that's right. Um, when you have something, maybe a bit of chocolate, maybe an extra sandwich, and you give it to someone else. Share. It was God's intention for all people to have the opportunity to flourish. And people don't just starve from lack of food. Food is one thing that helps us flourish and helps us develop. But to really flourish, we also need stability, we need peace, we need security. Today, we're celebrating harvest, but we're not thinking of fields and farms and orchards and God's wider creation. We're thinking about harvest in terms of people and what's needed for people to flourish. Roxy is here from Stevenage Against Domestic Abuse to talk about a group of people who often are not able to flourish because they're scared or they have to go without food so that their children can have enough or can't live in peace because of the violence they're subjected to and who don't have um, access to justice. This church, as its commitment to safeguarding, has a policy on domestic abuse. Our safeguarding policy is on display in the hall um, and in the entranceway, and I think also on that notice board. So if you want to read our policy on domestic abuse, you can. And talking about all those things that people don't have access to and the things that don't let them flourish, one of those things, as Christians we think, is not having access to God. So maybe we'd, now would be a good time to think about saying sorry. Maybe thinking about what we've done this week to stop someone flourishing. 
Maybe it was an unkind word. Maybe it was being rude. Maybe it was forgetting to share. So just take a moment and think, was there something that you did this week that stopped someone flourishing? And together we say sorry. Father God, we are sorry for the things we do and say and think which make you sad and for not thinking of others before ourselves. Please forgive us and help us to love you and other people more and more. Amen. And when we truly say we're sorry, God promises to forgive us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to stand and sing together. Come, ye thankful people, come. Thank you. 
Would you like to be seated and Moira and Rosie are going to read for us. Let the little children come to me. Don't stop. Don't stop them. Because God's kingdom belongs to people who are like their little children. The, the truth is, you must accept God's kingdom like a little child accepts things or you will never enter it. This is the word of the Lord. Roxy, would you like to come up and tell us your work and what you do? If you stand in the middle here so that people... Everyone, this is Roxy Chambers from Stevenage Against Domestic Abuse. Um, and she's going to tell us something about her work. Um, and also, if you're giving money towards the collection, what some of that money will go to. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Is that on? I'm not very good at this. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for coming today. I really appreciate it. I'm here today to talk to you about the SADA service, at Stevenage Against Domestic Abuse. We're now known as Survivors Against Domestic Abuse. Um, we are a service that originated in Stevenage and as volunteers, volunteers a lot of us started as volunteers and the service has actually grown quite significantly since then so it's been amazing to be able to support people during the pandemic and to watch our services actually to grow we have the next slide please so just to introduce us this is our team um, the, the team members have actually grown again quite significantly recently so it's quite nice to be able to put some names and faces together um, as a lot of the time the work that we do would be over the telephone and we don't always actually get to meet people since the pandemic so um, that's always very nice so these are everybody at the moment in the team but that team is still growing so I will still continue to share faces and things where possible. Um, next slide please. So our services, um, this, it's quite boring, this slide, because it pretty much just sums up all of the different support and things available from SADA. So I just, uh, I'd, I'd like to run through it a little bit with you, actually what we do. So we offer one-to-one -one support for anybody that was to come to us as a victim or survivor of domestic abuse that needs that support. We offer a huge range of things. So I run a drop-in on a Friday. So a lot of us all get together virtually at the moment. Um, and it, it isn't always a negative thing. It's nice that we can, all people from all walks of life can get together that have experienced the same thing and share that together and, and be there for each other. So we do that every Friday. 
Um, I also run a You and Me Mum course, which is to help mums understand the, domestic, uh, uh, the issues around domestic abuse and effect that that can have on children. I'm currently running that virtually as well. Um, we have our uh, safe space accommodation. Um, now originally, we had two properties and it was just in Stevenage. And these houses were to help people for around um, up to seven days to help them to flee on to refuge or somewhere safe. Um, however, uh, during the pandemic, that has hugely increased and the safe spaces are something that is unique to us as a service. We now have 25 properties um, and they're used as a, um, a stopgap, as, as if you would like, for anybody that needs that support. Um, so we have uh, lots of issues with refuges. They don't always accept um, families with older children. They don't accept uh, people for such a huge number of reasons. And that's if they're even available at the time. So um, during the pandemic, it was very important for us to push that forward and to make sure that we had all the space available across the county to house anybody that needed that support. Um, but there are also lots of other aspects of things that we do as well within that, including giving out food or free toiletries and various other things. So kind of any support that that person will need, we will be happy to find a way to give back to them. Next slide, please. So which one? All right. So I'm going to give you just a few numbers so that you know actually what it is that we've been doing over the past year. So we did support uh, 785 people um, in the past year. That was uh, 2020 to 2021. Um, that's uh, males and females. We had um, quite a lot of families come for our safe spaces as they increased. Uh, we had 33 families in our safe spaces, um, but that number will set to increase in the next year as our properties grow as well. Um, We've also given out 84 video doorbells for safety purposes. Um, we will often find any funding that we can to be able to offer that security to people for free. We feel it's very important. Um, and it's really interesting to see actually that 60, there were 61 male victims that actually came through the service in comparison to 19, which was in the previous year. Um, it just shows that actually that there are issues with both males and females around this issue and it just shows how brave and how incredible those people were to come forward and that's why it's really important that awareness is continued to raise so that any any victim especially the male victims know that they have somewhere to turn and that is a safe environment for them to do so as well so it's nice to see that number increase because the issues are still there they're just not quite spoken of at the moment. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, so originally, like I said earlier, uh, we just covered the areas of Stevenage. Um, I myself was a volunteer and so was my colleague Mel. Uh, we were both survivors ourselves who, uh, and there was no services available um, for that kind of support. So um, we stuck with it and did a drop in and um, eventually became employed. And from there, the service has just grown and grown. Um, and we now cover the whole of the county, which is very, very exciting for us. Um, and we'll hopefully to continue to implement all of the things that we do, but with that, you know, not just within Hertfordshire, but also out of Hertfordshire, where they haven't got all of these provisions available as standard in their in their counties because this is something that we we produced ourselves so um, it'd be nice to see others actually producing these sorts of services available for everybody across the country as well um, next slide please uh, I mentioned our safe spaces earlier now this is a bit of boring information again as you can see but there is some nice pictures there I will show you some pictures in just a minute um, our safe spaces, um, as I said before, have increased and we now have, I thought, I think it's 23, it could be 25 safe spaces now available. Um, they're across all of Hertfordshire, they're not just in Stevenage, um, and they go from bed sits all the way up to big family homes. Um, we will uh, fill up each of these houses as they're rented, private rented properties. We have to fill them with furniture, we have to fill them with food. We fill them with toiletries. Anything that makes up a house in your home that you could imagine makes up your home is what we have to find 
we put in these homes to make it safe for the people that live there. So it's a big job, but it's one that's massively worthwhile and something that we're very proud of within the service. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so as you can see, um, these are some pictures of uh, one of our safe spaces. Um, it is very, very beautiful in there and shiny and lovely. And I love it. I wish I could live there. Um, but I'm, I'm not, which is a bit sad. Um, and also there's some more pictures on the next slide as well, please, just for everybody to see um, the places that obviously people are staying. Uh, they're all privately rented properties. So they do have white goods in there available already as well. But like we said, we stock everything. So um, when families go in there, they can cook, they can clean, they can do everything they need to because often these families have had to leave everything behind for their safety, they just have to up and leave. Um, so it's really important for us to make sure that we've got that provision for them um, and for them to feel safe because that's it's really hard for people to make decisions about their future and what they want and what is best for them when they're in that unsafe environment. So for them to be able to have that respite to come away, to have somewhere safe, um, it's, it's massively invaluable to a lot of people and a lot of families. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is the drop-in that I mentioned earlier. Um, I run the drop-in every Friday. At the moment, it's virtual. We did used to meet together and have cake, which was obviously much nicer because everybody loves cake. But um, I would, uh, um, I, I hope that this will continue because it does mean that I get to reach people all across the county and I can offer that to everybody, which is really exciting. It has been really successful um, over the pandemic and I've spent a lot of time talking to a lot of lovely people. It's just as much a support for me as it is for all the other ladies that join. Um, we, um, I, have, I absolutely love it and I'm very privileged that I get to run that each week. So um, if you know of anybody that might benefit from that in any way, please, please do come and speak to me at the end and I can give you any details that you would want about that. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a case study. Um, so this is just a, a breakdown of an example of somebody that actually came to us and used one of our safe spaces. Um, so there was a lady that had come um, from another country. She uh, had married um, a partner and she had brought her child from a previous relationship to this country, um, which meant that she had no recourse to public funds. Uh, most people um, in the world, for some reason, assume that if somebody comes here, that they automatically are entitled to the universe. And unfortunately, that's not the case. I mean, I wish it was because it would make my life a lot easier. But there are a lot of people that actually come to this country, unfortunately, are not automatically entitled to any kind of support from the government or that extra support that, that we might get. So um, <clears throat> what happened was it was quite difficult for her to find somewhere to go and to move forward and she didn't quite know what to do. So it was perfect for us to be able to utilize our safe space. Um, she managed to flee from the perpetrator and came to one of our safe spaces and she had a son who was much older. Again, so it wouldn't have been appropriate for him to go to a refuge because they wouldn't have older uh, teenagers in there so it worked out perfect we had a space for her and she stayed there for a very long time um, we helped to support her with food and all sorts of things that she wouldn't have access to because she had no money because she couldn't apply for benefits and things like that um, so we helped her with what's called a dv1 concession and that is to help her to gain access to the things that she should be entitled to in this country to support herself and her child while she was living here, as it was no fault of her own that she had to flee domestic abuse. So um, that was perfect for us that we could put her in the safe space. We could pay for the rent and pay for everything for her in advance so that she could get to a place in her life where she could find safety and, and that respite. Uh, she stayed with us for around eight to nine months, I believe, and has now taken over the tenancy of that property so she can remain there as her forever home. So that's, we have so many success stories similar to this one, um, and it just shows how important it is to have these spaces available for people. So, um, yeah, that, that's just one of, out of our 785 stories from last year so as you can imagine it was extremely busy but massively worthwhile um next slide please um so 
if you do have any questions, uh, I am I'm happy to answer. I'm, I'm just outside here. I'm gonna have a few bits and bobs out just for you to have a look at. Like for example, um, I have a special bag um, that has a book and a bear that we created that we give to children when they're fleeing to refuge. Um, I have information about um, the You and Me Mum course if you'd like some more information about that. Um, also some other bits and bobs that uh, we give out of information if you feel that maybe you'd like to share the numbers and things in secret but no please do come and have a look and help yourselves to the bits that I have out there and if anybody's got any questions I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you will have and thank you all massively for having me today I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, Roxy, could we pray for you and your team, maybe? Absolutely, that would be lovely. So, so, dear God, we thank you for the work of Roxy and her colleagues and all that they do to help men and women and children who have experienced domestic abuse. We thank you for the listening ears and the support. We thank you for the safe spaces. And we pray that as they protect others, um, they would also be protected. Thank you, God, for all the good that they do. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> We're going to sing, and it's a song that was specially written for people who have experienced abuse. So some of those words in there, you might not normally think to use in a hymn, but you will know the tune. Maybe Guy, you could just play, we know the tune, but just so we get it into our heads, maybe you could play it. Um, one verse. <laughs> to stop. up and put it in if you'd like to bring your collection up and put it in the um in this thing so this is just for sada this is not our general collection 
This is just for Stevenage against domestic, sorry, survivors. What's it called now? Survivors against domestic abuse. So if you'd like to, for that collection, and then we'll sing the last verse once you... Oh, Benny, could you come and hold it for me? That'd be great. Thank you. And so we'll sing the last verse. Would you like to be seated, please? You should all have a leaf. If you haven't got one, if you just put your hand up, um, Claire will bring you one. And if you're at home, you won't have a leaf, so you could use the picture of the leaf on the screen. We're going to use our leaves to help us pray. So gently hold your leaf. And notice how fragile it is. It would be so easy to crush into dust. Dear God, we pray for the fragile people and places of this world. The people who have had hopes and courage, love and peace crushed out of them by abuse and circumstances beyond their control. Most of us chose the leaf that appeal to us. Lots of people can't choose. We pray for the places where homes and jobs, education and healthcare, women and children are sacrificed to the altars of religion, politics and power. Thank you, Guy. Thank you. So look at your leaf and notice its colour. Is there more than one colour? Notice its shape and the rips and tears in it. Dear God, old or young, black or white, gay or straight, we are layers upon layers of our experiences. 
the love that we've experienced, the petty cruelties that have caused the rips and tears, laughter, fun, joy, frustration, quarrels and heartaches, each has left their mark on us. Look at your leaf, look closely. Can you see the beauty of it, despite the rips and tears? Hold it up to the light and see that the way that the light shines through it. Dear God, help us to be able to treasure ourselves and know that we are still becoming. Like a leaf, we may fall to the ground, but we know that there is nothing in all creation that's lost to you. Help us to let your life shine through us. Thank you, Guy. Your leaf has got a stalk. This is where it was joined to the tree. Dear God, we pray for all those who feel as if they are not held. We pray for those who are anxious and afraid, those who are lonely and isolated, those who need healing in mind, body and spirit. So swap your leaf with a neighbour. Maybe swap with the people behind you or the people next to you. Rosie, shall we swap? Rosie, shall we swap? Think about the life of the person that you've swapped with, all that they've experienced, the knocks and hardships that they've endured. Think about the loveliness that's there, despite the tears and rips. For this week, just this week, hold that person in your prayers as carefully as you hold their leaf. And as we swap our leaves back, We pray together. In whichever language or version you feel most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
So this leaf, because we've used it to pray with, has now become a sacrament, an outward and visible sign of, of an inward and invisible holiness. So take your leaf home, put it somewhere where you'll see it, and it will help you to pray and to remember this church and what we've heard today and keep it safe. The singing group are going to end our prayers by singing Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. So if you'd like to make your way over to wherever you're going to make your way over to. Okay. Thank you.
Some notices. We had a, um, a coffee morning on Friday for Marie Curie, and so far we've raised ninety pounds, ninety-five. Sorry. So if you'd like to make that a little bit more, there are some cakes that are left over, and if you would like to buy a cake when you have your tea and coffee, or buy a cake and take some home, then you can add to that amount. Who remembers Martin Brown? You remember Martin? Well, I got a, a card through my door the other day addressed to the friendly vicar. <laughs> so it says to everyone at the church, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas and season's greetings from Martin. Dear vicar, has the services on Sunday mornings back to normal? Has Ruth started Wednesday evening group? yet and have friday morning started i'm going well at the moment p.s is a christmas dinner this year <laughs> so for those of you who do remember martin um i've printed out a big a3 sheet of paper maybe you'd like to write him a message um and i'll post it back to him or if you'd like his address and you want to write your own letter to him, um, I'll give it to you and you can um, send him something. But if you don't, it's on the back if you'd like to do that. Next Saturday, for those who are able, from half past 10 to half past 11, we're meeting at church and we're going to go litter picking. So I've ordered some litter pickers from... Um, the council, uh, bring your own gloves, wear suitable shoes. Um, the, I've ordered um, bags and the rings so that the bags stay open. So half past 10 to half past 11. All the, there's lots of churches in Stevenage doing it. It's part of Love Stevenage. We're going to do three very small areas. The playground off Drake's Drive, which is absolutely appalling. Um, the the path that runs between Pauline's house and Nobel School and Moss, Mobsbury Wood. So if you'd like to help, be here at half ten and um, we're going to finish up with tea and cake at half past eleven because that always, that always goes down well, doesn't it, tea and cake. Um, and last but not least, gift day. Thank you so much to everyone who gave. Um, we have got just over £7,000 and with gift aid that will go to well over £8,000. Um, so that's £6,000 last year, was it? I think. So that's even despite where our numbers are a little bit down. Thank you to everyone who gave so generously. Uh, when we talked about this at the finance group claire said we don't want to be a church that's always asking for money we don't want to be that sort of church and we don't but if you would like to give your weekly income a little boost then that means that we don't have to have a gift day because our overall income will go up so you might just want to think about that that's the last we'll say about money for a bit i think we're going to sing now. Uh, Benny, do you want to do a bit of drumming for us? Oh, you have to do the collection. Okay. All right then. Anybody else would like to do a bit of drumming? That would be fine. And we're, um, so let's stand and sing, Come and See the Shining Hope that Christ's Apostles Saw. <laughs>
Hold it up then. Hold it up. Hold it up high. Is it heavy? No. Mm. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you for your good gifts. And we pray that these gifts too would be used for your greater glory. Amen. Would you like to put them up on the, the altar for me? <gasps> Tommy, you've got shiny shoes. I love those shoes. <laughs> so we're going to sing the grace. For those of you who don't know the actions, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore and evermore and evermore. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore and evermore and evermore. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us forevermore and evermore and evermore. Amen. So we say together, Oh, we say goodbye to Rosie and to Moira, who read so beautifully for us. We say goodbye to Roxy, who's gone outside waiting to answer your questions. And we say goodbye to each other. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen. Amen. You coming out with me, Rosie? Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you can come. I, I, I put three thirty, but Shandy has written down four o'clock. But we always did three thirty, didn't we? So anyway, just come with you. I hope you can come.